Have you ever heard the term middle of the line in semiconductor fabrication flow? If not, you are at the right place. Yes, in this video, I'm going to discuss about the middle end of the line in semiconductor fabrication. We'll look at what is middle of the line or middle end of the line. Why is it important? And also, what is the future of this middle end of the line? Modern semiconductor fabrication has three major steps or stages. One is front end of the line, middle end of the line and back end of the line. In front end of the line, if I had to simply put it, transistors are fabricated. So the process such as wafer preparation, which is actually a Zokralski process, isolation, well formation, gate patterning, spacer extension and source drain implantation, silicide formation, all these things happen. In middle end of the line, also called as contact formation. See, I'm using the word middle end of the line because this was the official TSMC name which was used. So the, the people call it middle of the line as well. So these are the set of processes to form gate and diffusion contacts and also to form local interconnects. In the third stage, we have the back end of the line or BAOL, which is the formation of interconnects. In this, dielectric film deposition, patterning, metal fill and planarization by chemical mechanical planarization happens. The state of the art techniques uh, nowadays in seven nanometer use dual damascene process, which uses the plasma enhanced chemical vapor deposition. So why middle end of the line? Why am I discussing middle end of the line, not, uh, not the front end and the back end of the lines? So today, MEOL is the most challenging part of the whole fabrication flow particularly for lithography patterning. The industry is struggling to maintain the same timeline for contacts and interconnects because of increasing parasitic resistance of the contacts. As the device size is scaling down and down, the interconnect size also should be become thinner and thinner, which also impacts the contacts. So MOL has dimensional constraints from both front end of the line and back end of the line because the front end is reducing its size and back end which is metal made out of copper if its thickness reduces resistance increases so there is a layer in between which is middle end of the line which is which should balance between all those things so the dimensional constraints are significantly impacting the middle end of the line here is a statement from the CTO of Global Foundries if I look at the list there are 30 elements that we are working on to boost the performance of MEOL. So you can understand what is the level of research going on to improve the middle end of the line or contact formation. So let's look at what are contacts first of all. The first step in metallization process and part of the MEOL is contact formation. There are two types of contact formation that can happen, the ohmic contacts and short key contact. So ohmic contact is basically used in train and source formation as you can see here, there is an N plus and N plus region which are used for source and drain. Have you ever wondered why N we use N plus? Whenever we have a semiconductor and a metal junction, there will be a formation of short key contact. We call it as short key diode because at the junction between semiconductor and the metal, there will be a depletion re region formation. So in order to avoid that depletion region which acts like a diode we use a highly doped region for the contact which makes it as an ohmic contact so in this region the current flows by the principle of quantum mechanical tunneling rather than the thermionic emission in short key contact it's the other way around it is used for gate formation where thermionic emission is more pronounced this is the basic understanding you need about the contact before going to discuss about the advanced stuff the state of the art contacts at 16 or 14 or 7 nanometer technology nodes different chip makers have different flows for making contacts two layer schemes and one layer schemes are there let's let me discuss about the two layer scheme because this contact formation highly varies uh, with respect to the chip makers or fabrication foundries okay so in two layer scheme we have at the first layer contact to active or trench silicide it is called as contact to active nickel silicide is deposited on the source drain and the gate the silicides are deposited on all three terminals of the transistor and on top of this the contacts of titanium titanium nitride tungsten scheme deposited so the titanium nitride 
helps to prevent the oxidation of titanium and tungsten is a metal on top of these are deposited. So this acts like a contact and on top of that we have a tungsten plug. So this tungsten plug is sandwiched between the liner, titanium liner and the barrier which is a titanium nitride layers. So if you want to understand what is a liner and barrier you can go through them separately but I'm not going to discuss too deep into them but I want you to remember it's not always titanium there are other metals also which can be used at these places almost all those metals it might be tantalum or ruthenium or anything those are called refractory metals I want you to go through what are refractory metals as well so I have discussed previously what are the challenges that we have. A 10 nanometer, the critical dimension of the contact is approximately uh, 10 nanometer. And as you go down to advanced technology nodes, it will definitely reduce. And this causes a big problem in contact resistance. For solving this problem, the chip makers and researchers are devising a lot of approaches. One of that is, uh, one of those is this uh, new process which uses a metal organic tungsten film capable of replacing a thicker barrier. Uh, let's understand why this thicker barrier replacing is necessary. See, this is not copper here. Let's understand this as uh, uh, tungsten. We have, whenever we deposit tungsten, we place a barrier and liner and top of that is the tungsten. You can go through why we use barrier and liner. Barrier is used so that the metal here won't diffuse into this uh, oxide or bottom layer, right? And also the liner is used to protect the barrier from this metal again. But what happens as we sh go on shrinking the device, this entire portion has to shrink down there is no much room for our copper or if it is an interconnected it's copper if it is the contact formation or tungsten plug then it's the tungsten so there there won't be room for tungsten which increases the resistance we don't want this to happen so either we go for an alternate barrier which replaces what i'm discussing here which have which replaces a thicker barrier here a thinner barrier is used so that there is more room for this tungsten or copper or i can go for another alternate metal which you know doesn't require barrier at all for example cobalt cobalt doesn't need barrier but still the reliability of the cobalt is not yet known so and a new metal layer m0 is introduced to reduce the congestion cobalt is likely to be future metal for a local interconnect since it tremendously reduces the resistance. So in this figure, you can see a Wolfram M0. Wolfram is for tungsten. The chemical name is Wolfram. A tungsten contact is there and on top of that, a tungsten M0 is there. So they are using the metal layer M0 for local interconnect. It is also called as white metal or metal zero or M0. The reason why I said cobalt is likely to be future metal is because many foundries such as Intel are going for cobalt because it reduces the resistance by 50% compared to copper. So they are going to replace copper, but still the reliability of the cobalt is not, not yet known. The electromigration issue and all those things has to be understood before using cobalt. And a new set of process flow has to be designed for cobalt. That, that's why it is taking a lot of time. So the chip makers don't want to have a transition from one material to another because it, it causes a lot of problem. So what we can understand from this is the middle end of the line is the battleground of today's manufacturing technology CMOS fabrication process. That's it for now. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you in the next video.